I'm over here with Judy, my mentee, and we're going through a feral hive that we moved from a hive box that was old and falling apart to a new hive with new frames and foundation. Here's one of the original foundations here. As you can see, we just tied it around a frame and gave them a new home. As you can see, this foundation, as with all the other foundations in the lower brood box, are completely empty. The bees are not using them at all. And they have frames up here where they have not pulled that all the queen activity and the bee activity, the honey storage and the, and the egg laying are happening on the top brood box. So to get this hive prepared for winter and to get it to the right size, mm -hmm. we're gonna be shaking all the bees out of this box and completely removing this box and the frames and having a single layer brood box here. A couple things to think about when you're feeding bees. Judy put feed in here two months ago and hasn't checked it since then. As you can see this feed here, it looks like it's gone rancid. And the bees hardly have any honey in here. They have actually no food stores. They have a little bit of honey around the larvae, but no food stores at all. Frames one and two, and 10 and nine, which are the outside two frames of this box, do not have any honey in them. This hive will die during the winter without food stores. Once we consolidate the hive, we will clean this out, and she has already made up four gallons of one-to-one -one sugar water, and then we will resupply them with sugar water. She will make sure at least once or twice a week that she's checking this feeder to make sure they have plenty of sugar water. They need to take that sugar water and make stores for winter. When we opened the top cover here, there were bees inside of here, and she thought that this was not working, but it's actually working fine I mentioned to her that she needs to put a brick on here so that the weight of the brick pushes the top down on top of here and seals it because in my opinion bees were coming in from underneath and getting inside. A rule that I have is whenever I'm feeding a hive I have an entrance reducer on to reduce the amount of robbing and we'll do that here also. We've shaken all the bees out of the old comb. I recommended to Judy instead of burning or throwing away this comb is that we put it in a solar oven and melt it to filter it out. Even though this comb looks black, which it is because of the years of use, once we filter it, it'll be beautiful golden comb. So if she'll allow me, I'll take it home and I'll put it in my solar oven and filter it. There'll be a link below this video on the very easy process of filtering beeswax. So you can use it to make candles, lip balm, hand lotions, and other honey beehive products. I like the ratio of bees to real estate here much better than I did with the two boxes. Here is frame one. As you can tell, it's very, very little done on this frame. In my opinion, it's because they had no need to take the effort and the resources to pull comb. If there's not honey or brood to store, then there's no need to pull comb. And so they'll use the resources for food and for the babies. It is not because it's plastic. I've got a couple different videos on plastic and wax foundation, and I have found no difference between the two, whether bees prefer wax over plastic. I definitely prefer plastic. There will be a link below this video on the testing that I've done between wax and plastic. Here's frame two. You can see it has very little honey in here. It needs to be filled with honey. The reason why I'm showing you these first two frames is because I want to come back here in a few weeks and show you the difference after we properly feed this hive and allow them to have enough food to put up winter stores. Here we have the sugar water that we're going to be giving to the bees. We're using a one to one ratio that is either by weight or by volume. I prefer, because my math is so bad, just to use volume. What I have learned is that a four pound bag of sugar is the same as one gallon of water. So for me, what I do is I simply, I'll take for every four pound bag of sugar, I'll take one gallon of hot tap water and mix it together. Because it doesn't get really cold here in Texas, not compared to Minnesota or Wyoming or other places up north, I actually never use a two to one ratio, even through all the way through winter. Now that we've stirred that enough so that it's dissolved, and by stirring it, it actually cools it down, and so it's actually ready to go into the hive. I don't even have to wait to let it cool down. Remember, this is just hot tap water. Okay, this hive is buttoned up and done. We've added the one to one sugar ratio in the top feeder, and we've got the entrance reducer to help minimize robbing. Okay, Judy, so we've gone through the hive, inspected the top box, 
and inspected the bottom box. Tell me some things that you noticed as we went to the hive. Um, the top box was really busy. Um, not every frame was filled with honey for one. Um, we did notice larvae and very, very few hive beetles. So in general, it's a strong hive. It's also um, the last one of five that on this property has probably been here about 20 years. Um, in addition to reducing the amount of uh, boxing, we were able to remove old frames that were not being used at all, add the top feeder to make sure that they have nectar for the winter because there was certainly insufficient amount of food for them to really produce and be able to thrive. And I learned that you can do a lot of things wrong and learn a great deal about what it really takes to be a beekeeper and take care of your, take care of your girls. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And if you want to be a beekeeper, I highly recommend two things. First of all, join a local beekeeper association and ask them for a mentor. Second thing is, order the book, Backyard Beekeeper. It's a book that I learned beekeeping from, and I think it's the most up-to-date and most valuable book out there in beekeeping. I'll have a link below to that and to my local beekeeping association. And third, enjoy the bees. They're wonderful to watch and take very little work.